since uh, the last time I've talked to you, Carl Willett, he's uh, made quite a name for himself in Ring of Honor. He's mm. about to be a free agent again, from what wow. I understand. His contract expires December 1st. Yeah. Uh, so he might get picked up by AEW or he might sign to a bigger deal. But uh, you were pretty much a witness to that whole situation that yeah. took place with him in Montreal. If you yeah. could, uh, well, he, you know, Carl's a great guy. I always got along great with him. I haven't seen him in forever. Uh, he's blind in one eye. I believe it's the, the left eye, or right? well, anyway, he. I had been when I we first lost the Dean character. I was like two or three months just doing vignettes. I wasn't on the road. This was the first loop I'd be on the road. And uh, I was traveling with uh, PJ uh, as Aldo Montoya and Tammy and Chris. <clears throat> and uh, we were staying at the Days Inn by the Montreal airport. Uh, we got to the building as we were walking in. When you walked into the old Molson Center, I think it's torn down now, right? It's not, I think it's a different building. The Forum is torn down. Now it's the Molson Center. Oh, okay. It's called the Bell Center, I think, now. Okay, well, when you walked into the old Forum, I guess yeah. it was... There was uh, like the hallway, like sort of, you know, went from the doorway and like went down like in a semicircle. And there were two dress rooms on the left, a little bit, one staggered up higher. And uh, I went to walk into one of those rooms and Sean grabbed me by the shirt. He said, no, you don't dress there, you dress with us. So I followed them down past the Zamboni machine. They dressed with the Canadiens dressed. And uh, so I walked in, having no clue about the politics of the place. I was just first on the road. And I opened my bag up, and the door, dressing room door was here, bench and the, bleak, the lockers and things. And uh, so I opened my bag up, and uh, Sean is standing right here in front of me, and Scott, or Kevin Nash comes walking over, and Sean asks him, uh, what are you going to do tonight? Now, the, the setup to that whole story was Montreal had been slowly declining dropping, dropping, dropping. And Carl, who's from there, pulled in a lot of favors, did a lot of local press and busted his ass. And they, Vince had booked him in the main event against Kevin. Well, and let, if you do a clean finish, done. You're, you're not gonna draw anything next month or six months from now. So- Because they were going to Montreal I think, four times a year at that point or something like something that. Something like that, yeah. And uh, so uh, Kevin, said to Sean, uh, Vince wants some kind of a hot finish for, so we can do a return. Sean said, fuck what Vince McMahon wants. He said, and again, this took place, it wasn't like I was hearing this like over a cell phone like the like the, uh, the Holmes said with the president the other day. Uh, I was watching it and listening to it right in front of me. And uh, he said, fuck what Vince McMahon wants. And, Kevin started, you know, saying the right thing. He said, well, you know, if I beat him clean, I can't really do a return. And Sean, like, <laughs> bowed, like look, look it up, you know, because Kevin's so damn big. He said, let me ask you a question. When you worked with the champion, did you put the champion over clean here? And he said, well, yeah, but he goes, no buts. He said, fuck with Vince McMahon once. He said, beat this piece of shit. He kept going jackknife, one, two, three. Jack, he kept doing that over and over again. So he turns to walk out, and as Sean's walking out, pulls the door open, Carl's walking in. And it was my first like eye-opening thing because Sean had just been talking shit on Carl, who's a pretty pretty good hand with, yeah. kid with his hands, you know, pretty tough. Way back down. No, no, for sure, for damn sure. And uh, opens the door and he sees, hey, Carl, how you doing? Like, it becomes instant friend, right? So I'm wondering, well, that's strange. And uh, so he comes walking in. Now, Sean looks like he's walking out, whichever side Carl's blind on, uh, Sean walks like out the door and then does like comes right back in and he's standing behind Carl on his blind side. So now this, you, imagine what I'm seeing. Here's Kevin, here's Carl, and right behind Carl is Sean pantomiming to Kevin what to say. So I'm watching this and Carl says, so wh what do you want to do tonight, Kevin? And he goes, well, uh, and meanwhile, Sean's behind him going, pantomiming it. So I'm watching this and I'm like, what the hell's going on here, you know? And uh, finally, Kevin sheepishly, after several minutes going back and forth, she, Kevin said, I don't know, I was thinking maybe it's like a jackknife. And Carl goes, no, we can't do a jackknife. Vince needs, a, needs a, you know, some, some hot finish. And uh, Sean turns and leaves. So I was going to get a draw. So I walk up to one of the other dressing rooms up above, 
And I walk in and Carl, as I was leaving, I heard Carl said, let's, let's go talk to the agent. So they're walking behind me. So I walk into the room waiting to talk to the agent to get my draw. And Sean says, excuse me, everybody, excuse me. Uh, can I have your attention, please? My name's Sean Michaels. They call me the heartbreak kid. Uh, he goes, this is uh, Carl Lillet. They call him Pierre. Uh, he said, uh, uh, Pierre here has a problem doing a job for a champion tonight. And Carl goes, Sean, what are you talking about? I don't have a problem doing a job. And he goes, no, 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 we already heard what you said. And, you know, now Carl starts to move into, and everybody, of course, starts pulling him apart. So that night after the, middle, after the show, uh, it was a double DQ or something. Some, some yeah, like some, yeah, some, some crap finish. And uh, we were at the day's end. It was the, the hotel was one of those hotels where I literally from my doorway I could reach out and touch the front desk. You know, we were right off the front desk. Me and PJ were in the first room. The second room was Tammy and Chris. <clears throat> so as we're walking in, PJ's already gone into the room. Tammy and Chris have gone in. And I'm getting ready to walk in. The click walks in. And they're down the other end of the hall from us. So they tapped me on the shoulder. I, who did? I can't recall. But one of them tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, we're in room whatever. We ordered pizza and beer. Come on down. We want to talk to you. So now remember, in, in uh, NWA, I had been traveled with and friends with Scott. Uh, in WWF in 1990, me and uh, Sean were close friends, I thought. Uh, you know, in fact, we, you, you know, Sean and Marty and me and uh, Dustin Rose, everybody called us the Four Amigos. So, and I knew Hunter from the NWA a little bit. I didn't really know uh, uh, X-Pac. Uh, knew Kevin a little bit from, from the NWA. So I had no reason not to go down there. And I walked into the room and I can remember Kevin was laying on the bed and everybody else was milling about the room. And they said, uh, what do you think about the shit that happened in the building tonight? I said, you know, what are you talking about? They said, with Carl. I said, well, I, it, he made sense. I said, you, you do a clean job, you can't do a return. And Sean goes, see, I told you everybody, Sean, Shane understands the business. And then he starts to proceed to tell me how, how things are different in the WWF. And uh, so, you know, I, I knew enough not to say anything more. I just started listening and they all started ramping up like how they could receipt Carl. All because Carl wanted to do what the boss, the guy that owns the company, said they would do. And, uh, and he was right. You, again, you do a clean finish, you, you're done, no return. So uh, they all started like, you know, we should you know, do this to him, we should do that to him. Kevin picked the phone up. And started dialing the phone. He goes, I know, I'm just going to call Vince and tell him to fire him. <clears throat> and to this day, I can't remember which one did which. They had that much power back then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was this. Was, my first thought, I think, in hindsight was they're, they're working me, you know, to make me think they had this much power. <clears throat> and uh, Sean, it was, Hunter stayed out of it. Xbox stayed out of it. Other than a few comments here and there. Either Sean or Scott went over and hung the phone up and said, no, let's think about this for a while. And they started ramping up again, getting stiffer and stiffer. Finally, whichever one didn't hang the phone up, because one did one and the other did the other, said, I got it, let's call Vince and tell him to starve his fucking ass for three years. And I remember thinking to myself, I felt like I was watching a woman being raped. I wanted to go get out of there and go take a shower. It was so disgusting to me. Uh, as these guys that are being flown first class, picked up in limousines, uh, making money out the ass as guys like Carl who are, are schlepping and you've been there and done it driving hundreds of you know sometimes thousands of miles you know crammed in the middle seat in the back of the plane making an okay paycheck uh, and they want to starve this guy who has a family because he wants to do what the boss that owns the company said to do uh, it, it, to this they day it's to Memphis too didn't they that's right the end where they were hardly paying people anything that's correct yeah right after that so yeah pretty disgusting